And for us, why is it this season? God is saying, before you get to 2023, don't wait till December 31st. Papa is coming to River State to prepare the church, not just PFM. I'm speaking here as I'm the National Vice President of the PFM South South. But this is for all believers and even those who have not met Christ. Come, the evening program, which is the Supernatural Freedom Through Christ, by 5 o'clock in the evening, then the Excellence in Life and Ministry for Ministers and Professionals, which is 7 a.m. in the morning, 27, 28, 29, so 28, 29, and 31st, and the 1st of November. Then, of course, the one for the youth. I, that one is in my heart, the youth one. I wish I'm the youth to be there, too. Ignited for glory. When you are ignited for glory like Joseph, you are ignited for glory like David, your life will never remain the same. But bless God that this opportunity is coming our way. Tell others about it. Use your phone. WhatsApp this information to people. What you make happen for others is what God will make happen for you. We hope to see you there. We have the harvest. And then the fruits arrive. And we need to people that will go and reap them. It's at that time you need to readjust your time, adjust your schedule or schedule, adjust the way you spend your time, adjust the focus you have. Otherwise, that harvest will be wasted. And you know something? Look up here for a moment. When you're expecting a baby in the family, you know what, what, the, what the family does? You have father, you have mother, and a baby is just being born. Now, the way the church normally does, uh, they expect that baby just coming into the church, they expect the baby to adjust rather than the parents adjusting. But in a normal family, a baby is about to be born. The mother is pregnant, and they're counting days. She will, she will soon deliver. You know what they do? The father begins to adjust. And the mother begins to adjust even before the child is born. And then they begin to, you know, clear some things uh, from over there where the baby will be taken care of. And then they begin to look at their finances. They begin to adjust their finances because a baby is coming. They do not expect that it is the baby that will adjust to fit the regular routine of the family. But it is the family. The parents and the siblings that will adjust because of that baby. The same thing when we're expecting a church to be planted here and babies to be born there and converts to be raised there and those converts to be disciples there. It is the church expecting those converts that will adjust. What kind of understanding will the converts have? What kind of church building will the converts be looking for? What kind of music will the converts be looking for? What will keep them? What will interest them? What will make them know that we care for them? But you know, most churches, they continue the way they have always been. And they expect that when those converts come, when those converts are won, immediately the first day of birth and the first day of conversion, all those babies, they will readjust to match the life and the expectation and the pattern of the parent, of the adults in the church. It doesn't happen that way. That means then, if we're really going to do what the Lord is calling us to do, the things that worked yesterday, maybe they're still working, working for the adults working for the members and working for the disciples and working for the people who are there but if we're going to get all those converts and we're going to retain them get them and retain them we must adjust we we'll adjust our focus and if we know that people are perishing and that we need to reach them in time we need to readjust everything that we're doing so that by the grace of god we're going to reach out to them i want to show you something about this adjustment Second Kings chapter 14 verse 25. He restored the coast of Israel. He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamas unto the sea of the plain according to the word of the Lord God. To innumerable number of people all over the globe, the monthly outreach has become a huge portrait that the Almighty God is employing to fulfill the exalted demands of the Great Commission across the globe. It is against this background that we need to further explore areas that could provide greater Philip and complementary support to what the Lord has been doing through the courageous and sacrificial efforts of our Father in the Lord especially 
with regards to literature distribution and evangelism. Commendably, the book, Kumuyi, the Defender of the Faith, is being greatly used as a pivotal tool for massive evangelism. Since its launch, the book has been making exceptional impact across the continents. For about three months, specifically in the last quarter of last year, it was the number one book bestseller on Amazon in the area of evangelism and publication. The GS biography has proven a collector's item everywhere it has been received. Consequently, some very committed brethren within the Lagos IFL, through the kind permission of the GS, took on the daunting challenge of purchasing, purchasing huge copies of the books, distributing them to states within the country and nations around the world free, free of charge. This peerless initiative has been undertaken for the twin purposes of unflagging evangelism to literature distribution. The effort also equally provides much subsidy for the book so that a greater number of our members can have unrestricted access in owning the book. Some other states, such as the Federal Capital Territory, Rivers, Delta, North, and South states, through their respective IFL chapters, have also gone ahead to prove their worth and heroic contributions. Other states, like Akwaibo, Taraba, Ogun Central, and Cross River, are waiting in the wings to rise commendably to the occasion. Surprisingly, however, and sadly too, Lagos, the Equator Church, is yet to show appreciable zeal and anticipated initiative in this regard. Except for the unique initiative of some IFL brethren, the outlook of our Lagos brethren has been very lukewarm. We learned authoritatively, for, for instance, that copies of the book allocated to the Lagos church, as was done to other states, are left untouched in the vast majority of the groups of districts. We honestly pray that our Lagos brethren, under the leadership of our able moderator, our reps, and good pastors, to come forth with a pragmatic, measurable, and achievable plan soonest in providing the book Kumuyi, Defender of the Faith, with the stature and spread in the South consisting with the unique, unique, personal, and distinguished apostolic office of the general superintendents. This indeed has become more compelling and imperative because many copies of the book, as I'm speaking to you, are still in stock, waiting to be bought for massive evangelism and resource material for other Christian organizations and leaders who stand to benefit immeasurably from the book. At this time, we, don't, we, not, we ought to have ordered a reprint in the B to spiritedly complement the GCK in reaching the whole world with the whole gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have heard, you too may have heard, Many leaders in and outside the church referred to the general superintendent as their mentor. He is a true mentor that every minister, worker, believer needs 
to fulfill God's call. And I want to tell you, it is no secret that our own general superintendent has a mentor. Are you surprised? How did he meet his mentor? I was just meditating. It was through books written by the, his mentor or written by other people about the mentor, though separated by over two centuries. Yet, the mentor continued his mentoring. It is hoped that the Lagos headquarters and also other states and indeed all nations will quickly rise up to this immediate challenge and meet up with the, char the charge of the years that we deliberately enhance and sustain our literature, evangelism, and uh, literature evangelism drive across the world. It ought to be that the book be distributed massively at every GCK outreach, freely, as lasting legacies and undying imprints of every crusade. It is my humble suggestion that Kumuyi, the defender of the faith, be given out free to all GCK converts that attend converts rally or banquet, as we may call it, after each edition. The essence and relevance of the book is not simply about its launch. It is at once about the need to exploit it as a powerful evangelism tool across the world, consistent with the mission and mandate of GCK. Now is the time, therefore, for all of us from towns, cities, states, nations, and continents to quickly seize the day and recognize the immense weight which this book can and must lend to the monthly global outreach. We must massively purchase them and distribute them to those waiting to be blessed by them. Undoubtedly, God will bless you and me mightily in return as we do so in Jesus' name. Let us quickly cast the vision, renew the initiative, and re-energize the effort to use the autobiography of our general superintendent and other publications as powerful and potent evangelizing tools across the world. Please, I beg you, buy it. Please, read it. Read it and read it again and read it again. As we approach the end of the year, buy it in large quantity and give it out as precious gifts to somebody. The blessings of the book is not going to be limited to this generation, but also for the generation unborn. If Jesus tarry, mark my word, century to come, God will lead somebody, maybe in deeper life or outside deeper life, to read the book and make such a person to commit himself to bring back the holiness messages, the holiness life, holiness of life that will be found in the book. This is the mandate of GCK, and this must be the vision of every one of us as we collectively and boldly strive to reach the whole world with the whole gospel. We are going to do it. I didn't hear you. We are going to do it. The Kumuyi defenders of the faith, their warehouse is just behind the altar. From tomorrow morning, let's start coming to make our order and carry them to the glory of God. Let's bow our heads to pray. Father, we thank you very much for what we have heard. We pray that, O oh Lord, you give us understanding of what we are saying. And as we understand, help us to respond and to obey all you want us to do for your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Name, 
for the Lord is good. Let us sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name, for the Lord is good. Alleluia. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name, for the Lord is good. Brethren, sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name, for the Lord is good. Alleluia. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name, for the Lord is good. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song. Let us praise his name, for the Lord is good. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Shout hallelujah. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor. Power and might belong to the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Singing, amen, amen, amen. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belong to the Lord forever and ever. Amen. This is my night of joy, my night of joy, my night of joy. Hallelujah. This is my night of joy, my night of joy, my night of joy, hallelujah. This is my night of joy, my night of joy, my night of joy, hallelujah. This is my night of joy, my night of joy, my night of joy, hallelujah. This is my night of joy, my night of joy, my night of joy, hallelujah. Tonight is my night of joy. My night of joy, my night of joy. This is my night of joy, the night of joy, a night of joy. Hallelujah. Tonight is the night of joy, the night of joy, the night of joy. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain, this mountain must be removed. This mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power, it's not by mind, by my spirit, 
mountain. This mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain must be removed by my spirit, says the Lord. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Satan, I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Demons, I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus sets me free. I shall not be bound. I shall not be bound. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Failure. Bye-bye. We are marching into the success city. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Failure. Bye-bye. We are marching into the success city. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye, sickness, sickness, bye-bye. We are marching into the healing city. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye, sickness. Sickness. Bye-bye. We are marching into the healing city. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye, sickness. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, disappointment. Bye-bye, disappointment. Bye-bye, disappointment. Disappointment, bye-bye. We are marching into the appointment city. Bye-bye, disappointment. Bye-bye, disappointment. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Bye-bye, failure. Failure, bye-bye. We are marching into the success. City, bye bye, failure, bye bye, failure, bye bye. God's not dead, he's alive. God's not dead, he's alive. God's not dead, he's alive. I fear him in this church. I feel him in my home. I feel him all over me. He is not dead. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I feel him in my life. I feel him in my home. 
I feel him all over me. He is not dead. God's not dead. He's alive. God's not dead. He's alive. God is not dead. He's alive. I feel him in this church. I feel him in this place. I feel him all over me. The man of Calvary, he has done it before. In my life, in this place, he will do it again. Jesus of Galilee, he has done it before. In my life, in this place, he will do it again. The man of Calvary, he has done it before. In my life, in this place, he will do it again. Jesus of Galilee, he has done it before. In my life, in this place, he will do it again. God cannot lie, his word must surely come to pass, because he's not him. God is not a man, his word must surely come to pass. He is not a man, because he's not him. God is not a man, his word must surely come to He is not a man, because he's not him. God is not a liar, his word must surely come to pass, because he's not a man. His word must surely come to pass in my life, because he's not a man. God is not a man, his word must surely come to pass. He is not a man because he's not a man. I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe it is well with me, it is well with me. I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe it is well with me, it is well with me. I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me, it is well with us, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with us, it is well with us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I believe it is well with us. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, the Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Jesus, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, the Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, the Lord, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, my God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Power, power belong to God, 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 power,
belong to God, power, power 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 belong to God, power. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory, 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 hallelujah. Conquered the world and gave us victory, 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 hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. The Lord has conquered the world and gave us victory. Victory, victory, hallelujah. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who gave us that victory. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what may say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today, today. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what may say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what may say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for every child of God here tonight. I will pray, O oh Lord, you make everyone special, unique, extraordinary in Jesus' name. Now our door is open. You will wipe all tears away. All sorrows are gone in Jesus' name. I pray tonight, everyone here, you will touch. Everyone here, you will heal. Everyone here, you'll deliver. Everyone here, you'll provide for. I pray you set every captive free in Jesus' name. And all our people everywhere, south, north, middle belt, anywhere anyone is now, hearing the sound of my voice, I pray, Lord, that moment of the breakthrough will come for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we're standing here today on the threshold of victory. I will pray, O oh Lord, nobody will cry. Yes. Nobody will have a loss. Yes. Great, 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 mighty things you'll do for everyone in Jesus' name. 
as we hear your word now, your word will come in and faith will be born in every heart. And when it comes to time to pray, Lord, we pray the heavens will be opened. And all prayers are going to be answered. Signs and wonders tonight. Miracles tonight. Deliverances tonight. Healings tonight. Provision tonight. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. I read from verse 9. Then I read from verse 11. Then I'll go back again and read from verse 9. Verse 9, Genesis chapter 33. And you saw said, I have enough. And you saw said, I have enough. Come to verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. Do you see this in verse 9? Esau said, I have enough. Jacob said in verse 11, I have enough. I'm going to read everything now from verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. In verse 10, and Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore have I seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. Take here, still Jacob speaking, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought unto thee, because God has dealt graciously, wonderfully, abundantly with me. And because, and because, and because I have enough, and he urged him, and he took it. Tonight, we're talking about possessing enough for the present and for the future. And I look at you and I say, praise the Lord you are here tonight. Because from today, sufficiency. Abundance. Provision. All the promises of God will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Possessing enough for the present and for the future. We're looking at Philippians chapter 4. And I read from verse 18 and then I jump down to verse 19. Every promise we'll read about tonight is yours. And you're going to claim them, and the faithful God of heaven is going to fulfill them in your life in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. But I have all and abound, I am full. Here is Paul, the apostle speaking, who apart from Esau. We've heard from Jacob, and now we're hearing from Paul, and very soon we're going to hear from you. I have all and abound. I am full. Look at verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. On every side, the Lord is going to pour his blessing upon you. In your life, you look to the right, you look to the left, you look in front, you look back. Everything around you will be fullness and abundance in Jesus' name. In 1 Kings chapter 5, and there I read from verse 4. 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 4. It says, but now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. Every side you go out, you'll be full. You come in, you are going to be full. In your office, in the market, you are going to be full. 
where you travel, you are going to be poor. Anywhere you find yourself on every side, there's going to be the fullness and the abundance of the Lord in your life in Jesus' name. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil or courage. Neither enemy nor a foe. Nothing will harm you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7, For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all thy works. There will be no farming, there will be no barrenness, there will be no dryness in the land. Because the favor of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God will be upon your life. For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy, thy walking through this great wilderness these 40 years. The Lord thy God has been with thee. It will be with you. Thou hast loved. will not lack anything in Jesus' name. Possessing in all for the present and for the future. I'm coming back to this, Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 9. Once again, we're listening to this man that said, I have enough. His name is Esau. And Esau said, I have enough. My brother, keep that thou hast unto thyself. You see, it was unfortunate for Esau because here comes Jacob. The Lord has blessed Jacob on every side. The promises of God have been yes and amen in the life of Jacob. He had enough and to spare. And now came to his brother and said, let's forget the past. And I come to you tonight and I say, let us forget the past. I said, let us forget the past. You see, between Jacob and Esau, they had hurt one another. And you know the story between Jacob and Esau. And Esau had been saying, I'm going to get him. I'm going to retaliate. And Jacob said, let's forget that. The past is gone. Now we have the future ahead of us. Well, everything I have, I'm going to give you this. And Esau, no, no, don't give me anything. I have enough. And then look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. And it says, For therefore have I seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God, and thou wast pleased with me. It was saying, The Lord has preserved my life. I heard you wanted to kill me because that's what Esau said he was going to do. But the Lord protected that Jacob, he will protect you. He preserved Jacob, he'll preserve your life. And now, the preservation of God upon Jacob, upon the members of his family, upon all his inheritance, everything he had, we can see that. And he said, I saw God. I saw the face of God. I said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And in the previous chapter that I saw the face of God and that angel, and now I'm seeing you, and I'm still seeing the face of God and the hand of, of God. Therefore, receive at my hand. I'm going to talk about Dada's preservation. Number three now is what we read in verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God has dealt graciously with me. He said, you know what, Esau? We've been separated for many years now, but every day of our absence, every week when we're absent, I've seen God. He has dealt graciously with me. And we're transferring that same blessing of Jacob upon you today. That every day of your life, from now till you see him face to face, he will deal graciously with you. And that's why Jacob now said, those words you used. I am the word, one that you use those words, saying, I have enough. And I want to declare to you that nobody is going to hinder your blessing. And you're going to have enough in Jesus' name. That's what I call prosperity and sufficiency. Number one, the profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. That's Esau. 
the profession of satisfaction. He said, I'm all right. He wasn't all right. I have enough. He didn't have enough. And Jacob wanted to be a blessing. He said, no, no, I don't need it. Of course, Esau, you need it. And you need your destiny to be changed. You need everything to be turned around in your life. But yeah, he was having profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. Number two, the preservation of saints. I'm coming to Jacob now. I said, I'm coming to Jacob now. The Lord changed his name. He will change your name. He changed his nature. He'll change your nature. He'll, he changed his destiny. He will change his destiny. All the enemies of Jacob became his friends. All your enemies will become your friends in Jesus' name. Internally, God will change you. In your family, God will change you. The situation around God will change everything. In your place of what God will change everything. That you, you will not even recognize yourself anymore because you were poor, now you are going to be rich. You were sorrowful, now you are going to be happy. You were barren, but now you are fertile and you are productive in Jesus' name. You were a failure, but now you are a success. You were lonely, but now you are a man or a woman of fellowship. Because God is changing everything about you from today in Jesus' name. The preservation of saints through divine intervention. The Lord will intervene in your life. And it is starting tonight. By the time you get home, if there were people that didn't come to the service tonight, when they see they'll not recognize you anymore. The joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. The preservation of sin through divine intervention. Number three, prosperity and sufficiency. Huh, you are coming there. I said you are coming there. Prosperity and sufficiency with divine investments. With divine investments. You will make an investment in the kingdom of God and God will make investment in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. Look at that in Genesis chapter 33. Genesis 33 and in verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And that's what is called contentment. Cont he said, I'm all right. I'm content. I'm satisfied. I'm saying, Jacob, you lost the birthright. I'm all right. You lost the blessing of Isaac. I'm all right. Divine inheritance is not yours. I'm all right. You know the people that say they're all right. They're all right without salvation. They're all right without the new birth. They are all right without the names in the book of life. They are all right without the joy of the... They are all right without eternal life. They are all right without the protection of the almighty God. They are all right without the ministration of angels. They are all right without a miracle. You will not be all right until a miracle takes place in your life. And this night, you're, now you'll really be all right. I said you'll be all right tonight in Jesus' name. When the miracle hand of God touches it, and that's there, you'll be all right. When your healing comes tonight, it is there, you will be all right. When God takes the one limitation lack away from your life tonight, then you will be all right. When God takes away that incurable disease, it's only there, you'll be all right. When the hand of Jacob comes upon you, when the hand of Jesus comes upon you, and then he shovels to you, and then parts across to you, across to you, all the blessings of heaven, it is there, you'll be all right. But if you don't have Jesus, Tell me what's your joy. If you don't have salvation, tell me what's your joy. If you've lost the birthright, tell me what's your joy. If you have not born again, tell me what's your joy. If your name is not in the book of life, tell me what's your joy. If angels are not serving you like they serve the people of God, tell me what's your joy. If you don't have a bank account in heaven, tell me what's your joy. If the promises of God are not yours, tell me what's your joy. But when you come tonight and say, I know I'm not all right. I need Jesus in my heart. I need forgiveness in my life. I need the salvation in my life. Then you'll be all right in Jesus' name. But you know, look at Esau. Esau said, I am all right. Hey, don't say that. Let Jacob tell you, I met angels of God. There was a ladder that connected heaven to earth. Let me tell you the story. Don't say you're all right. And then the Lord blessed me. I've been to Laban. And then every day God has been gracious. And I want to pass that grace grace unto you. I want to pass that mercy unto you. That, I've, I've seen miracle. I've got wife. I've got children. I've seen miracle. I've seen the angels, the host of God. And he followed after me.
me let me introduce you to them only then will you be all right and then i saw god face to face and my life is preserved and i wrestled with that angel at night let me introduce you to warfare spiritual warfare and have victory then you'll be all right but jesus said no don't tell me anything i'm all right i pray you'll not be like that in jesus name I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 12. This man who said, I'm all right. Satisfaction without divine inheritance. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm reading there from verse 16. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. It says, lest there be any fornicator. I will not be a fornicator. Oh, no, profane person. I will not be a profane person as Esau. Well, when somebody invites you to, into the blessing, of, I'm all right. Somebody invites you to a church like this, I'm all right. And somebody invites you to come into the blessing of the Almighty, the abundance of the blessings of God upon your life. And he says, come on, I'm going to shower this upon you. Because Jesus Christ said, the thief cometh not, but to, to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have that life in abundance. And no, I'm all right. That's like Esau. I will not be like Esau. But you come to the Lord and I say, oh Lord, I, want, I don't want to be like Esau. I want to have divine inheritance, divine impartation, divine inspiration, divine revelation. Look at this. That you'll not be like Esau, who for one morsel of bread sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Look at the man that said, I'm all right. I have enough. He was rejected and he didn't come into the blessing. Then it says, For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He sought it. In. Then he gave up. You, you know, many people, that's why he said, I have enough. He said, Maybe that's all right for me. Maybe that's my destiny. Maybe I'm not supposed to have it. Maybe it is not my luck. The provision of God will be yours. And you're not sit back and say, maybe I'm not supposed to have it. Of course, I'm supposed to have it. The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord has called you into blessing. You are going to enter into that blessing in Jesus' name. Let me come now to number two this well. I, I, want, to talk, I want to talk about this man. His name is Jacob. I said his name is Jacob. And then his name was changed from Jacob to tell me. Israel, the Lord will change everything about you. And anything negative will become positive in Jesus' name. Everything that is upside down, God will put it right side up in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let's look at the man. In Genesis chapter 33, Genesis chapter 33, Genesis chapter 33, and we're reading from verse 10. From verse 10, it says, And Jacob said, and Jacob said, and Jacob said, You open your mouth and you proclaim your own blessing. You open your mouth and you declare the promise of God upon your life. And Jacob said, Look at what he said. He said, Nay, I pray thee if now I have found grace in thy sight. He said, Now everywhere I've been going since I left many years ago, I met Laban, I found grace. And then I got to the well, I found grace. And then I came out of that place and Laban ran after me. He wanted to hurt me, but God said, don't touch that man. He's my child. I found grace. And since I've been from step to step and day after day, I've been finding grace. And the Lord is saying that anywhere you go, you'll find grace. You'll find mercy. Before you get there, those closed doors will be open to you in Jesus' name. And so he said, I have found grace in thy sight. You'll find grace in the sight of all your enemies. The people that said, come what me, I'm going to take on that man. I'm going to take on that woman. I'm going to cut him off. When you get to them, they'll not be able to do it. You'll find grace and mercy and happiness and joy in their sight in Jesus' name. He said, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore have I seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. Can I tell you the antecedent of that? The background of that. How is it that this man of God was preserved? was protected and Esau coming with 400 men could not touch him can I show you it's because of divine intervention divine intervention look at Genesis chapter 32 I read from verse 1 and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him hey, this is how this is how this man Jacob became preserved 
became protected because in the previous chapter, while he left the house of Laban and was going like this, before he got to Esau, before he saw his enemy, he saw the angels of God. When you see God, before you see the enemy, your enemy is paralyzed. When the angels of God meet you, before you ever see your enemies, all those enemies are paralyzed. When, they, when these uh, agents of God from heaven, and this means of God from heaven, when they see you, before you ever see anything negative, all those negative things are neutralized in Jesus' name. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he calls the name of that place Mahanaim. And then it says, Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Let's jump down to verse 6. In verse 6, and the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau. And also he cometh to meet thee. And 400 men with him. He wanted to finish Jacob. Nobody will be able to finish you. No matter how many people they gather together, all those people, conspirators against your life and against your destiny, God will scatter them in Jesus' name. And then we're told in verse 7, in verse 7, and then Jacob was greatly afraid, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and the herds, and the camels into the into two bands. And then look at verse 24 and see what he began to do. He began business with God. We have business with God tonight. I said we have business with God tonight. I will not let you go except you bless me. I will not let you go except you bless me. Tonight must be your night because it says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the and the and the and the violent take it by force. Jacob said tonight, I'm going to have it. And you are saying tonight, I am going to have it. My breakthrough is tonight. My healing is tonight. My miracle is tonight. My deliverance is tonight. I'm go not going to let you go except to bless me. You know, some people say, when God wants, then God will do it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because uh, from the days of John the Baptist until tonight, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. You're going to have it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, and Jacob was left alone. And there is still a man was him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie, and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaketh. Let me go for the day breaketh. Well, the miracle has not happened yet, and the angel said, Let me go. Will you let him go? The, 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 the miracle has not occurred and the provision has not come and the way the door has not been opened and then the angel said let me go and Jacob said you go look at what he said we're looking at that in verse 26 and he said I will not let thee go I will not let thee go and that man determined the day of his blessing that man determined the time of his blessing. The angel would have gone, but this man prevailed over the angel. You will prevail. When you prevail in prayer, you have prevailed over your enemy. When you prevailed in prayer, you have prevailed over all negative circumstances in your life. When you prevail in prayer, you have prevailed over all those circumstances walking in your life. He said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, promotion. I said, promotion. As a priest, before he got to prayer, it was just like ordinary, it was just Jacob. But now he was Israel. A change had come. Before you came, how did you come? Sorrowful? Sad? Me? Look at my condition. Before you live here tonight, the joy of the Lord. Miracles bring joy. Healings bring joy. Deliverances bring joy. Answered prayer brings joy. Testimony brings joy. You are taking one home tonight in Jesus' name. 
as a prince, as thou power with God and with men, and thou hast prevailed, and thou hast prevailed, and thou hast prevailed. That's how that man, Jacob, had